Glory to our King, our Lord, the Master of Steel. Glory to our Knight in shining armor. Hello and welcome to Once More with Feeling, Season 4, Episode 1, Avatar Country, the newest album from Groove, Prog, Power, Death Metal, with a little bit of country outfit, Avatar. Avatar! Um, not involving any Navi, thankfully. Oh, but come on, they're like little uh, blue people. What's wrong with that? I mean, that's just, that's just, they could have been so much better with that in here. I mean, you know, running around with their spears and bows and, wow, I just, I sound kind of racist. <laughs> I sound racist now. Okay, so, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hide over in the corner. Don't mind me, I'm just gonna, just gonna go over here and just kind of go chill on my own and not really be involved in anything. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to really worry with neon blue dances with wolves when you're talking about music. I mean, that's just a pain in the arse. Um, Tatanka? Tatanka! Sorry, I, I felt that was necessary. You, you mentioned, you know, Dances with Wolves, so yes. But anyway, yes. So, Avatar Country. Um, where to begin with this? Okay, so I actually got this album four days early. Uh, it's one of the few times where a pre-order actually meant something. Woohoo! Pre-orders! <laughs> It's sort of like, hang on, but it's due out on Friday. This is Monday. What the hell? I'm not complaining, just what the hell? They knew that you were going to review it. <laughs> it just so happens this review is going out well after the release date. So, uh, it, advancements? I don't know. <laughs> um, but, yeah, um... Where to begin with this? Um, well, let's start with the first track. Let's just go track by track and kind of just give a general synopsis. Yeah. Because this this is an album that actually means something for a variety of reasons. So, like, the first this first track here, it just kind of opens up. It's almost folksy, where it's, you know, just a happy little entrance, that kind of thing. And I, I kind of, I had no idea who these people were beforehand. I You, you introduced me to these guys. So I popped this in, started listening to the first the first track, and I was like, oh, this is kind of joyous. I can kind of get down with this. Yeah, this isn't so bad. So that was how it started for me. I don't know about on your end, Mr. Weird-Ass Music. Well, um, of course, I discovered this band last year with Feathers and Flesh, and... Is that a BDSM album? Oh, no. Um, it's basically framed as sort of like a Nordic Edda, so it's this big epic kind of Norse poetry kind of style album. Okay. About a war between this owl and an eagle. And the owl has a wolf as her ally. And she's saving her young and finding a new home for them. And it's all very bombastic and larger than life. So I wasn't sure what to expect from this album, but I knew it was probably going to be very big, especially judging by the singles that were released for the album. Yeah, so yeah, when I when I popped this in, that first track came on, it just felt felt nice. It was it was a good opening. I liked how it opened. Hmm. Which then segues into the second song, which goes straight into like power ballad metal from the 80s. Yeah. Like, the closest thing I can describe it for, like, a newer band would be, like, Dragon Force. With their ridiculously long, extremely crazy power ballads. It's kind of how the second track felt. And it felt not bad. I was still into this. Mm. Things were interesting. I was still really cool with this. So I was like, yeah, this is kind of cool. I can kind of get down with this. Uh, where the second track comes, I'm in two minds about it. Because I did like it, but at the same time it felt kind of like they mashed two songs together yeah i'll give you that at least at this point though the song itself the theme to it it was still one style yeah it was ridiculous but it was one style yeah which is fine we haven't hit the weird parts which are coming up soon yeah uh, it's the third one correct the third one is the one that goes country on us if i remember, if I remember right yeah that's where my brain just shut down well the King welcomes you to Avatar Country. Avatar have done a few country-influenced songs before. Uh, specifically, Let It Burn. That's very much a sort of bluegrass country-influenced song. But you can still recognise it as Avatar. 
The king welcomes you to Avatar Country. I'm not sure what to make of it other than it sounded like ACDC, but really watered down. I wouldn't even go that far. It just sounded like every bad country song that's come out of the United States over about the last 10 years rolled into one. Yeah. And then given a weird context, because it still, of course, follows the... You know, I, I believe we're supposed to be following, like, the daily adventures of this king as he goes through, with, like, all these different parts of his life. Yeah. Or something. It was kind of hard to follow where they were going with this, and I really didn't like this one. This is one of those songs where I was like, please, just be over soon. And it goes on forever. Oh, God, it goes on forever. It just doesn't die. Uh, which is funny you should say that, because... Oh, Lord. I just realized, yeah, it's one of the, lo- it's the second longest track on the album. It, it was, it was painful. Like I, when, this, when a song like this pops up in an album, I almost always just skip it. Mm. You know, you you listen to the first 30 seconds of the song. And if you don't really feel like you're into it, the first time you go through the album, you skip it. You're just like, you know what? I'll come back to this track another time, that kind of thing. But because I was giving this album album a full review with you today, I listened to the entire song. And the whole time I was listening to it, I was like just gritting my teeth going, please be over soon. I can't do this any longer. So when it finally finishes and you go to King's Harvest, it was the weirdest transition. Yeah. Because then you go from that to, because this is where we go to like almost death metal, where it's like almost like Slipknot meets like, um, it was like Slipknot-ish at certain points. Then they threw in some stuff where it was like As She Remains. And then it kind of went back to its power metal. Like it could not find a rhythm and it couldn't find an actual flow. And it felt weird after listening to the country music song from hell. So it just was not, not good not good not good i felt really weird the entire time this one was going through i was like no please just don't torture me anymore man i just signed on to help somebody i didn't sign on to this one i didn't sign on to this at all boss so that's where i was by track four yeah i mean i didn't hate the king welcomes you to avatar country but it's not a good song. <laughs> I disagree with you entirely. It is a horrifyingly terrible song. And that's gonna song that song is gonna haunt me till I day I die. I'm gonna that's that's the song I'm gonna hear. You know when you get onto a subway and you're thinking to yourself, there if there's a, like a certain certain song is gonna play it, I'm gonna get murdered by somebody. Mm. This is that song. This is the song that's gonna play right before I get murdered by somebody with an axe on a subway. <laughs> <sighs> Well, that's basically me with any Taylor Swift song. Well, uh, technically speaking, that one about, about you know, actually murdering her ex, that technically would apply for anybody. <laughs> yeah. But that, that just goes without saying. Yeah. Um, I mean, King's Harvest I do actually really like, but because of that transition, it's one of those, ah, ah, ah. What the fuck just happened? Yeah, like if if the if the third track, you know, the welcomes you to Avatar Land, if that wasn't there, yeah, if it transitioned from Legend of the King to King's Harvest, I probably would have liked it more. Yeah. So like if I listen to that track completely out of context and just listen to it by itself, I'll probably like it because as I said, it's got the heavy metal to it, and I'm a huge metalhead. Right now, I'm wearing a heavy metal T-shirt, so obviously, this is my jam. But it felt so weirdly out of place. Like, as you've said in the past to me about, about hearing musical whiplash, that happened. I was suffering that. Yeah. Oh, God, it was horrible. Just, oh. I mean, I'm just going to go a bit over the place with this review because the album is a bit over the place. But I, I will just say right now, I would cut The King Welcomes You because it is so out of place and just does not fit with any of the other musical styles. What they should do is put that as like a bonus track at the end. Yeah. Just like, you know, not even, it doesn't have, it doesn't have to be a hidden track. It can just be like, like the last two are technically kind of bonus tracks. They could have just sl- snuck that in after the other two bonus tracks. Mm. And then it wouldn't have felt so out of place. It's just their massive shifts in tones. It's like someone goes from second gear in their car to fifth gear and then down to third gear. Yeah. As they're trying to drive along. It doesn't make any sense. And my brain hurts imagining how this person like 
just puts their car together. Or if they're making a sandwich, they're like, okay, so meat on the bottom, then a piece of bread, and then we're going to put some, like, uh, some, you know, tarmac in the middle, and then put another piece of bread and uh, cheese on the top. There you go. Here's your sandwich. You're like... How did I how did I get to this point? Where what what have I done in my life that's led me here? Which is mean. I mean, honestly, I bet you I would probably have liked The King Welcomes You to Avatar Land. Apparently we're just gonna talk about this one this one track. That's it. This whole review is about this one track. <laughs> but I probably would have liked it out of context. Mm. I wouldn't say like it. I would have probably enjoyed it more. Yeah. I have to be very careful with my wording there, because I don't think I'd like it, but I wouldn't be as irritated by the track if I had heard it singularly by itself yeah having because i mean it starts out as i said it starts out folksy you're kind of like oh this is kind of cool i kind of like that you know we've got kind of like an older feel i get it they're like all the tracks are talking about the king obviously we're stuck back in olden day mm. we go from that to power to a power ballad from the 80s i'm half expecting van halen to pop up i'm like oh okay i can i can still get into this this is pretty cool <laughs> then we go to fucking twangsville it's like no what did you do so anyways <laughs> enough talking about this third track we have to move on there is so much more to talk about yeah with king's harvest that's one of the shortest songs on the album save for the opening track which interestingly enough it's actually a rendition of the swedish royal anthem really yeah i did not know that that's actually really cool uh which is the kungsangen it's something if i was gonna say there's no way i could ever prepare even remotely pronounce that there's just like no way i'm sure there's lots of dots and squiggly lines and about 85 vowels and about 14 consonants in one word so i'm I'm not even going to bother to try it's like that in welsh are the two languages i would never try to pronounce even remotely you couldn't even put like a gun to my head and be like nah bro just pull the pull the trigger there's no way i'm going to pull this off it's anything any attempt i'm going to make is going to sound racist so i'm just gonna just go just shoot me just just get it over with yeah i think it's probably something like kumsurgen or something something like that i mean I've never learned any Swedish. Uh, the actual pronunciation is Debbie goes to the store and gets a pail of eggs. That's what it, that's what the actual actual word actually sounds like. You're, you're getting stuck on the like the thirteen T's and the and the uh, and the two C's there in there. It, 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 it just got those are all silent. Those are all silent. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, King's Harvest. Um, that's one of the shorter songs on the album, and I really liked it. Yeah, I mean, it, it was good. It's just, once again, the whiplash. Yeah. And, like, the like the King's Harvest and the King Wants You both kind of bled together to me. I didn't really... My brain didn't really feel the ending of one going into the other. It still kind of felt very similar, if I'm remembering right. It, my brain's kind of a little hazy at this point, because I was still pissed off at the third track. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the King Wants You, I've listened to... God knows how many times. I mean, that was one of the singles released, and I was sort of like, when watching the video, it's like, oh my God, it's like someone put my D&D campaign into a video. (laughs) Uh, I was half expecting you to go like, yes, Holy Diver. Yeah, that's that's my D&D character right there. Okay, well, all right, kill switch engage, got it. Uh, the next one after after the king wants you was the king speaks, and I have so many mixed emotions about that track because it's not a musical track. It is the weirdest, weirdest segue I've ever heard ever in a non comedy album. Yeah, I, I mean, it's the one spoken track on the album, and is essentially a very elaborate poop joke yeah and also they did like a groundhog joke when they were referring to the the king and his mustache because his mustache is so so well trimmed it's going to be a it's going to be an early spring this year like they do all kinds of weird jokes in there and it's all it's all intended to be very serious sounding so it's it's basically deadpan humor thrown in in the weirdest spot, like the segues, people, better segues. That's good. It's just why. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a very funny one, but it's just sort of like, what the hell is that all about? Because um, on my second listen through, I was just picking up on the various jokes being made, and I was sort of like, wait, what? 
Yeah, it's the only song I listened to a second time because I had to go back and listen to it because I couldn't believe I had just heard what I just heard. Yeah. Because all the other ones I was just trying to knock out so I could be like, okay, I listened to this, I understand this, I listened to that, I understand that. That's the one I immediately went back as soon as it was done playing. I was like, no, I got to hear that one again. I have to hear this again. Yeah. So many things were wrong with what I just heard and I have to hear this again. (laughs) So that was The King Speaks, which at first I was like, okay, is this going to be like a... You know, um, what is it, George the George the Fifth, or I'm, I'm getting my royals wrong. The king during uh, World War Two. I was like, is it is it gonna be a reference to him, or are we talking like a different king entirely? And then when I actually heard, it, I was like, nope, that's definitely not him. <laughs> be hilarious, but that's not him. Got it. Okay, moving on now. <clears throat> um, next, you've got a statue of the king. And oh wow that one's that one's really really heavy metal yeah and i was not expecting it i loved it i loved it to death i was like yes this is my jam i like that one yeah it's probably i'd say it's the heaviest song on the album yeah and it hits you it hits you so unexpectedly yeah like i love a good metal song that starts out kind of mellow and then just drops it all on you and then just doesn't let up. Yeah. And that's basically what this does, which is good. I liked it. It was a good metal song. Yeah, it's just this huge, bombastic, very furious, very aggressive and incredibly boastful song. It's sort of like, okay, um, yeah, you've got this statue. Uh, we will steal your souls. All of your souls, they will be taken down deep into the spells of hell and given to the Statue of Destruction. That's basically what the song is like. You're like, whoa, what the fuck? Oh, okay, all right. Um, statues, got it. Uh, yeah, okay. We, we like your statue, got it. Okay, we can work with this. <laughs> I mean, it's essentially felt like the metal equivalent to a national anthem. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> oh my God, could you imagine? It, you know, like if a, if a country was ever going to go metal, it would be North Korea. Yeah. That would be the ultimate. But it, there would obviously be accordions because they love the accordion in, in North Korea. So it'd be a metal accordion band just going completely ape shit on stage. And I would listen to that. Actually... There is such a thing as a metal accordion band. I've seen them, yes. There's a couple metal polka bands. But I'm just saying for a national anthem, yeah, that is the most metal country I can think of offhand because it's the only country that is just insane. Yeah. Like that. I mean, no other country is that insane. Well, okay, maybe the Congo's back in the 90s. But other than them... <laughs> Other than them, that's about the only country out there that's truly metal. Mm. And, and and our president right now. But we're not going to talk about that. Moving on, moving on. King after king. King after king. Let's move on to that song. Yeah, king after king, for me, that actually felt, for me, like the last song proper on the album. Whilst it's not the actual ending song, it felt more like how you'd end the album. Yeah, everything else beyond this point's a bonus track. Mm. I agree. It's got a good ending to it. It's got a nice, a nice melody. I did enjoy King After King. It wasn't their strongest song by any means, but it wasn't bad. It was just like a, a nice little respite at the end. You're like, okay, this is kind of a nice thing. And when it ends, you're like, okay, I still see two more tracks. What the hell is happening here? Yeah. Which we then go into the Silent Songs of the King, part one and part two. Part one is like the beginning track, a nice folksy dance. You're like, oh, this is kind of nice. You know, we've been through some pretty emotional times together, me and this album. I don't know how I'm feeling right now. <laughs> and this is kind of nice. And you're like, okay, so when this ends, what on earth am I getting myself into? Because I don't know how I feel about this album at this point. Because I'm having some seriously mixed emotions. Basically, this album is like a bad Tinder date. <laughs> it starts out kind of hopeful, gets really freaking rocky for the first about 20 minutes. And after the first 20 minutes, you're just kind of like, okay, I don't really know what's going on. So you do some silly jokes and shit gets serious. And then the date kind of ends and you're like, okay, I think at this point I'm pretty good now. I don't really know where I can go from here. And then the date keeps going for a little bit longer and you're getting a little nervous because it got kind of comfortable again. You're like, well, shit, am I going to, am I going to have sex with this person? What's happening? Which leads into the final song, which... I didn't really enjoy that much, even though it was actually kind of like a heavier version of the previous one. I just didn't didn't feel it. I didn't really like it much. Yeah, I, this is where we get into things like um, rearrangements for albums and things like that. I kind of feel that part one and part two would have actually worked better if they were closer to the middle of the album. Yes, I do agree. Yeah, if it was like, for instance... 
if you took the king speaks well i definitely laughed at it mm. didn't necessarily need to be in the album that could have been like released as like a, a spoiler to their fans on youtube or something i don't know and it could have taken the place of those really yeah i i think if if you switched around the king speaks and silent songs of the king parts one and two because with the way king after king progresses that actually works quite well as a sort of a funny little coda. Yeah. Because the thing is, King After King is this very dramatic song about how the king will return and there will always be a king. And just having the king speaks to lead off from that, I think might have worked better. Yeah, see, I can, I can see your point there. That actually does make a bit of sense. But at the same time, it does also work to lead from the king speaks to a statue of the king so i'm yeah i don't know it's it's difficult to rearrange this album i definitely would take the king welcomes you to avatar okay i swear i didn't want to talk about this anymore but as a final final nail in this damn coffin taking that song and either taking it out of the album releasing as a single and going this is a supplementary song or sticking at the very, very end of the album as a bonus track of like, <laughs> the king didn't shut the fuck up and he wants to keep talking to you <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. That would be fine. But just ugh, like that one needs to move. Mm. The king's harvest is fine. Like it could follow the legend of the king just fine. King wants you can follow king's harvest just fine. King speaks. Well, poop jokes mm. and mustaches. Yeah. Statue of the king, a fucking metal king after king. Good ending. And the silence, the silence songs of the, uh, the King Part 1 and 2 uh, could have, honestly, if they really wanted to, they could have just tacked it at the end of Glory to Our King. Yeah. They could have just made that first uh, first track just really long and had to be a really nice like introduction where you're just like, okay, am I listening to Tool where it goes on for 15 minutes straight with just instrumentals? <laughs> yes, I am. That's basically what they could have done with the opening. And I mean, I appreciate that they wanted to like close you out. But why close out with a kind of a heavy metal-ish folk song? Yeah. That just doesn't feel right. You're like, I'm really pumped out and it's over. Okay. Yeah, it's that's the thing. It's sort of like, whilst I like instrumentals as closing tracks, I'm not a fan of when it's a really high octane, you know, because th part two feels like a sort of march to war type track. Irony is they could have flipped those two. Have King After King, part two, then part one. Because King After King was that nice metal. Mm. So they go from that to the, uh, basically the continuation of the metal where it's more instrumental. And then from there do the softer. Okay. Actually, no, sorry. King After King wasn't metal at all, was it? Crap. No. Everything's fucked up. I don't know. I'm so confused at this point. I'm arguing against myself. I've lost my mind. Well, King After King was sort of a, that was a power metal sort of ballady kind of thing yeah see i'm having a hard time remembering it because it's like a lot of those a lot of the tracks kind of just blended together in my brain going Aah. so mm. yeah but i mean they could have definitely put two than one that would have been the smart way to go about it have like so you've got that like you're pumped it's the end of the show everyone's dancing and then it kind of just mellows out and you're like okay now i can kind of ah, i can kind of just relax now and go back to listening to celine dion Oh god, no one wants to listen to <laughs> <laughs> Oh come on, you don't you don't wanna you don't wanna listen to Celine Dion after some power metal and, and Norwegian death metal. I mean come on, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Where's your sense of spirit? Uh I mean I, I suppose it could be worse. It could be an album by Olivia Newton John. No. Just no. No one wants to listen to an album by Olivia Newton John. No. Just no. Absolutely not. <laughs> Edmund, I will find out where you live and I will murder you. You have brought forth hurt on this world. You will now have to pay the price. <laughs> Some people's children. Well, do you have any closing thoughts? Um, uh, well, I've not just closing thoughts, but thoughts on the album overall. Um, here's the thing about Feathers and Flesh. I still say that's an amazing BDSM title. <laughs> I swear, it's an amazing BDSM title. Uh, here's the thing. With that album, how they framed things is they opened with a poem, and then you had an outright song, and it alternated between that. And I feel this album would have benefited from that sort of format to better frame the songs. Yeah, it's just like a little small 
spoken word before and after. Yeah. Just to give the songs a bit more of a context. I mean, that could have actually made The King Welcomes You work better. I know we keep going back to it, but it's such a jarring track that it's very difficult not to keep going back to it. (laughs) I did really enjoy the album. I know you have very mixed feelings about it, but... (laughs) As I said, it was a Tinder date, is what it was. It was a really, really weird Tinder date, where it's like, I have so hopeful, and then, oh my god, what have I signed up for? And then, well, this is actually not going so bad. Oh god, what are you doing to me now? No, I don't want to see your stamp collection! (laughs) But I feel that if they'd had the sort of connective tissue of spoken word tracks... Yeah, I would have gotten more more emotionally attached to probably a lot of this. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's it's definitely something where if you're in the mood for a rather different take on a lot of these styles of music where, for instance, if you do like heavier metal but also really do like power metal like, say, Dragon Force or... I keep going back to that band because that's the band... I, as soon as I listened to some of the power metal, I was like, oh my god, this is basically... This is basically the same band. And then it went like, no, we're not. And then I was like, never mind. <laughs> but for a little while, it's like, oh my God, it's just Dragon Force. I'm, I'm totally down for this. Uh, so if that's the kind of metal you like, is that kind of joyous metal or like 80s hair metal, then there's definitely some of that in this. Just be prepared for some rather weird curveballs. Because <laughs> there, are, there are a few of those where it's like, well... Okay, so you really enjoy your hair metal. That's nice. How about some screaming during the middle of it? You're like, no! What happened to my hair metal? My hair metal didn't have that. I'm kind of I'm kind of weirdly getting tingles between my thighs. So, you know, that kind of thing. You'll get lots of that. And now I've embarrassed the Brit. <laughs> oh, I'm just amused by what you're saying. <laughs> Well, it, you know, it's never a review with me if I don't sexually harass my co-host, because I'm obviously never going to be on daytime TV, so I might as well sexually harass the co-host I can get here, so, yeah. But, yeah, there are so many things that come out of left field and make you go, what? Huh? I'm confused here. That's okay, Edmund. Everyone's confused at that age. Eventually, you'll grow out of it. Sorry. I, that was a cheap shot. That was a cheap shot. <laughs> but anyway, um, yep. Yeah. Final thoughts on this album, I suppose, really, it pretty much comes down to this. If you like Avatar, I reckon you might be in the position of... You might give this one a skip, you might be fully enthused to it. I really enjoyed the album, but I can definitely see a few fans going, eh, didn't really jive with it. I suppose the closest equivalent would be when Cradle of Filth released Thornography, because that was a very polarising album and caused a fair few fans to go, nah. Sorry, the name of that band always gets me, every time. It's just such a such a great name. See, as an outsider coming into this band, mm. I'm curious enough that I'll probably go dig up other music by theirs. Sadly, their music, the only one that's available to me on Pandora is just this album. Mm-hmm. But I will probably go dig up the other ones. If you're completely unsure about this album before purchasing it, um, I'm sure some of the music is up on YouTube. By all means, definitely dig up these two tracks. First off, The King's Harvest. Sorry, The King Wants You. The King Wants You is a first good one to listen to to see if you like it. The second one that would be a good one to kind of just jump into would be uh, A Statue of the King. Yeah. Those are the two. Dive in, listen to those two tracks, because it shows you pretty much what a lot of this album has available to it, mm. where it just spans like all different kinds of genres. It doesn't just stick to one genre. It just goes completely off the rails, left and right, during the songs, and that's what makes it enjoyable. Just be prepared that if you then dive in and actually purchasing the album, there's a lot of curveballs with the way that they do the music in this. So it's unique. I've never heard another band do something like this, at least not that I can think of off offhand. Mm. But as an outsider looking in, I'm not sold entirely. I mean, it's not the worst album I've listened to by any means, but it's definitely not one I'm not going to like go to all my friends and go, oh my god, you've got to hear this. Other than like a choice track or two that would be a particular style that I know my friends would like. Or at least, you know, The King Speaks, because that, sh- that shit's hilarious. Yeah. Um, going through their albums, uh, there's a few that I would recommend, like, Feathers and Flesh. Um, BDSM. <laughs> Black Waltz is a good one. Um, oh, uh... Blackwater is usually called oil. No, Black Waltz. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. I thought I heard water. <laughs> um, 
you should probably see a doctor about that uh no it's usually red water whenever i see red water coming out of me that's usually a that's usually a bad sign um yeah the strongest two albums before this would be feathers and flesh and hail the apocalypse i'm pretty sure hail the apocalypse is actually an ode to brexit so maybe don't check that one out (laughs) because i'm pretty sure that's exactly what that is isn't that's an ode to brexit oh my god (laughs) Uh, signs that it's not just america in trouble but the whole world anyways yeah um anyways uh yeah i suppose give this the rating um oh i hate number ratings so we're gonna do it out of five or out of ten out of five all right i'm gonna give this a hesitant 3.5 which is higher than i would probably normally give it but because on reflection there are certain songs I'm going to definitely go back and listen to a couple more times mm. just out of context rather than, in, you know, from start to finish because, mm. well, track three needs to burn and die. <laughs> but yeah, I, I liked it more than I was prepared to like it because you have had a hit and miss with me. Sometimes you're like, this is the best thing since sliced bread. And I go, you're damn skippy. It is. Then you go, this is, a, this is the best thing since sliced bread. And I go, Edmund, shut up and go away. This this falls somewhere in the middle of that. It could have been a lot better. But it could have been a lot worse. Yeah. So this gets a three and a half out of me. Three and a half out of five. Yeah. I'd be... I'm more inclined towards 3.5, but possibly a four because of songs like The King Wants You and A Statue of the King. Yeah. See, those those are some killer tracks. I'll give you that. Those are tracks where... You listen to it and you're either you're either dancing in your seat or you're, you know, nodding your head along or you're stabbing an old woman with a knife. One of those things, you know, <laughs> depending on preference, you know. But, um, yeah, I, I'd possibly be more inclined towards a 3.5 because the amount of rearranging that I'd probably do, plus I would just outright cut um, The King Welcomes You because that is so jarring and so out of place that it just... I like it out of context, but in context, it, it's a very weird song to have. For those of you who have not heard it, imagine you were listening to Slayer. And while you're listening to Slayer, the third track ends up being uh, More Than a Woman by the Bee Gees. <laughs> That's how dramatic of a shift in tone it is. Yeah. So you're like, Slayer! <laughs> You know, people are being murdered in the background, screaming, hollering and stuff. And then it's like, more than a woman, more than a woman to me, you are. That's basically what happens. It's that severely different of a tone. Yeah, your brain actually kind of just goes, fuck it, I'm out. You actually hear it, close the door, walk down the steps, get in the car and speed off. You actually hear this happen inside your head. It is so dramatic that it's just... I, I hate that I have to beat this one track to death and then beat it beyond death. I continue to beat this track until it's now a mulch and I can actually start growing things with it. That's how badly I've beaten this track and I still feel like it needs to be hit more. You've been beating it like it owes you money. No, no, I'm beating it like it's dead grandfather owes me money. That's how much I'm beating it at this point. <laughs> I've worked through the grandfather, the father, and now I'm working on the child. Soon enough, I'll be beating the children who haven't even been born yet. That's how much I've been beating this damn thing. And it still feels like I haven't hit it enough. <laughs> I'm really sorry to people who, who sang this song and spent a lot of time and effort. I appreciate that. I do apologize, but this track just sucks, man. It just sucks. It's kind of it's kind of refreshing that I'm actually the moderating influence in this situation. You know, normally I'm the one that goes completely ballistic. I mean, I was saying about when Baby Metal and Dragon Force did a collaboration that that song should burn in rusty flames. See, that's not fair. But anyway, yeah, it's rather refreshing that I'm actually the moderating voice here where I'm sort of like, yeah, it's not great. But see, you should have just gone full bad cop, bad cop with me. Then we would have been completely on the same page. But no, you have to take the sensible route and have your arti- not artistic, journalistic, arti- integrity, integrity. What the hell is my brain doing with words today? It's like, you want to get that journalistic integrity. Don't you mean journalistic integrity? No, see, you're also an artist who's so integrity. <laughs> Damn it, Jim. Give me another Slim Jim. Anyways, moving on. Yeah. If you're a fan of the various genres that Avatar fall under, it's kind of a case of, could you have any more metal genres? 
Um, I think there's a few left under the carpet. We could always check. They technically didn't go Screamo if you want to consider Screamo a metal thing. It's a weird one. I don't tend to consider Screamo a musical effort. Fair enough. There are some Screamo bands that actually are musicians as well as screaming. And I mean, there are a couple of times where they do scream in this album, but eh, they, they do it more along the lines of like As She Remains and that kind of band. So it's more artistic rather than just trying to see how many octaves you can break while trying to trying to destroy a microphone with just your voice and anger. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh... <laughs> I think, at this point, I think you're just spent. You're just like, Ugh. Pretty much. I think I finally, I think I finally worn down the Edmund. I broke him like a, like a little child. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that's it. If you if you like their music, you might like this. If you don't like their music, well, listen to two tracks and make a decision. <laughs> that's the best they can say. Because the rest of the album is just all over the place. And, well, odds are you'll find at least one track on this you'll like. Lord knows which one it is. Mm. Anyway, uh, that's it for this episode. No idea what will be the next episode. I will look through the various lists and edmund is going to review austrian death machine double brutal hell i could do a retrospective on all three albums if you wanted me to the second one's the only good one i didn't really like the first or the third one the second one was the good one in my opinion but that's just my humble opinion as a sociopath who lives here in southern california (laughs) (laughs) yeah so Actually, that's a good point. If you want me to review all three Austrian Death Machine albums in a row. Just number two. Just number two. Don't let him do all three. You'll cry. I've listened to all three of them. Don't worry about that. No, no, I'm not saying you cry. I'm saying they cry. Because, you know. Well, isn't that what I want them to do? Well, it depends. I mean, if they're paying you, I guess, well, I guess some people do like to be, uh, you know, tortured to the point of then they cry and they pay the person to make it happen. So in that case, if you enjoy being horribly humiliated, give him money. He has a Patreon and he's trying to stumble out and I keep, I keep interrupting him. Give this man money. He needs it. Yeah. Otherwise, he can't buy cocaine hookers and Austrian death machines. I don't know where I'm taking that. That just went completely off the rails. Now I'm going to just sit in the corner and let him do his spiel. Yes, if you want to hear me review all three Austrian death machine albums, or if you want to hear me cry and weep and beg for mercy and review a Celine Dion album, ooh, 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 or an Olivia Newton-John album, ooh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> or everyone wants to hear this man cry do it do it now or in that same vein if you want to hear me review a john travolta album and we all know how awful his music is or oh let's see um david hasselhoff oh god joe pesci joe pesci he did put an album out it was a jazz album please someone pay him money to do that it would so be worth it trust me i've actually heard a couple of tracks from that and it's kind of amazing (laughs) but yeah if you want me to review any of these things go to my patreon it's 7.99 Seven ninety nine gets you a Patreon review, which includes an opportunity to review the album with me, if you so wish. Trust me, it's worth it. Uh, it's only little old me running this whole operation at the moment, so... Don't listen to him. He's actually got small circus elves. Then that, That's a real thing, circus elves. Pay... Don't Google it, though. Paying me will actually mean I might have money to buy researchers and actually make this shit show worth something. That'll never happen. Hashtag, don't spend money on him for researchers. Spend money on him for cocaine and hookers. Anyway, whatever will be the next review, it'll be up on the Facebook group, my Twitter, and I'll probably announce it on the YouTube page somehow. Whatever. We shall see what is next. Woo! What is next? What is next? What is next? Anyway, it's goodbye from me. And goodbye from me, your um guest host of the week. Guest co-host? Yes, guest co-host of the week. Um, You can check out my channel, which nothing gets uploaded, or you can watch me on Twitch at... Uh, www.twitch.tv forward slash the one true mouse i do stream like once every couple of years something like that my my twitch streaming is random as everything else in my life and 
I'll be trying to get these episodes a bit more regular. Don't hold out any hope. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <sighs> Take care, folks, and have a good day. And don't forget to tip your waiter. Promise, too, we should build you a promise.